In this lesson, we're going to have some fun exploring the shaping tools you have here in Corel Draw X4 that allow you to take multiple objects and create new shapes out of them. You can see here on the file that I've opened already named shapingtools1.cdr, which by the way is in the Lesson 10 folder if you've got the exercise files and you're following along. We've got six tools to look at here. The Weld tool, Trim, Intersect, Simplify, Front minus Back, and Back minus Front. So here we've got a series of shapes that have been combined to create what could be considered artwork. And what we're going to do is use these tools to create some new artwork out of what you see. And we're going to start right here with the Weld tool. So the first thing I'd like to do is zoom into that area. I'm going to click my Zoom tool. F2 on the keyboard also allows you to do this. Click and drag around the Weld area. And this is the area that we want to focus in on, our stop sign with the arrow through it. So I'm going to click on my Pick tool. And the first thing that we need to do to access our shaping tools is to select the objects that we want to use. So in this case, with the Weld tool, it sounds like we're going to be bringing a couple of objects together. The order that you select your tools is extremely important. Welding is going to take these two objects and create one object out of them. And if I select the stop sign first, which is red, then hold down my Shift key and click on the arrow, the second item chosen was filled with white. That means when I go up to my property bar and click on this very first button of all of my shaping tools that appear here, the Weld tool, watch what happens. They all get welded together into one shape and the fill color by default is set to white. And that's because I selected the arrow last. Let's undo that by clicking the undo button or control Z on your keyboard. We'll deselect by clicking off the page. This time, we'll click on the arrow first, hold down the shift key and click on the stop sign. Now when we go to weld these two together, you guessed it, they'll be welded together just like they were a moment ago, but this time they're filled by default with the red fill, the second object selected. So now I've got a brand new object. This is ideal for people if you're in design making or engraving. You've really just created an outline of all of your shapes. So if you have multiple shapes together and you weld them together, you end up with this nice outline, great for key cutting and so on. All right, let's zoom back out, Shift F4, and let's go on to the Trim tool. Back to F2 on the keyboard or click your Zoom tool, and let's zoom into the Trim area here. Trim is kind of the opposite of welding. In this case, we're going to use our pick tool to select what we want to trim and what will be trimmed from what we select. So for example, if I click on my arrow and hold down my shift key and click on the stop sign second, I'll be trimming this arrow from my stop sign. Watch this. We go up to the second button here in our shaping tools, give it a click. And what's happened here is I've actually cut out a piece of the stop sign. So I can show you that by deselecting, I'm just clicking an empty space, click on my arrow here and move it out of the way. You can see there's a big hole in my stop sign now in the shape of the arrow. So I delete the arrow and I've just created a brand new shape here using the trim feature. Very cool stuff. F4, we'll zoom us back out and I'm going to go to my zoom tool and zoom into the intersect area. Now intersecting, as the name may imply, is where we're going to focus in on where our objects intersect one another. And you can see there's an area right here and over here where they intersect one another. There are areas where they do not intersect each other. So when I go to my pick tool, click on the stop sign, shift click on my arrow to select them both. Let's go up to our intersect button here, the third one of our shaping tools give it a click. And now what we've got, you can see some lines going through here. I'll go off the image to deselect, go to my arrow now and just move that out of the way. And look what I'm left with here. It's kind of an intersected version. A brand new object is created based on those intersecting points. So if I was to fill this up with blue, for example, or cyan, you would see what that looks like. Brand new shape. The other shapes remain in behind, but I've got this new one. I'm going to hit delete to remove it and Shift F4 this time so I can see the whole page. Time to talk about Simplify. Okay, let's go to our Zoom tool and zoom into this area. Here where we've got multiple objects stacked on top of each other, what we've got here are, for example, a couple of circles. And if I move this top circle out of the way, you can see there's a full green circle underneath. Underneath that, I've got my arrow. 
which actually extends past the border of my circle and beneath that I've got a full stop sign. Well really I've got areas that you can't even see that I don't need and because I've got them the file size is actually bigger than it needs to be. So I'm going to undo that move and I'm going to select all of these objects by marquee selecting. I'm going to click and drag all those objects except for my background there and I'm going to go up to the simplify button. So the simplify button is the fourth one in. When I click on it, nothing really seems to have changed. But let's deselect everything and then go to that circle and just move it out of the way. You can see in behind, I can see right through to my background. And I've got a new shape here, which looks like a green ring. If I move that out of the way, you can see right through to the background. My arrow is no longer a full arrow, it's a piece. And look at my stop sign in the background. It's a brand new shape as well. So all I'm seeing is what I need to see. The stuff in the background doesn't need to exist and increase the file size for no reason at all. The simplify button is always going to bring down file sizes when you're creating objects like this. So Shift F4 will take us out and it's time to talk about front minus back and back minus front. So I've got identical images down here. I'm going to zoom in to my front minus back option. Back to my pick tool and I'm going to click on my arrow. I'm also going to hold down shift and click on the stop sign in the background. And let's start with the first of the two, front minus back. When I click on the front object minus the back, you can see what I'm left with. This area at the top and at the bottom of my arrow, but what was in behind, the stop sign, has just removed that portion from my front object. So if I move over now, I'm just going to scroll over here to my back minus front area and deselect anything that's selected. Click on my stop sign, hold down shift, click on my arrow. This time I'm going to go up to the last that we're going to look at in this lesson, back minus front. When I click on that, you can see what I'm left with. The back stuff, which is the stop sign, minus anything that was on top of it. And there's a little wee bit down here that you can see that was visible between the crease and the arrow at the bottom. So just a few handy tools to help you get a little bit creative creating your own shapes and of course if file size is a concern we've got some options here in our shaping tools that will bring down the overall file size. Shift F4 zooms us out to see the end results of our experimentation with the shaping tools.